August 1992. Spear fisherman David Gant and Scott Williams returned to Nickajack to get the one that got away. We was going back looking for the big fish. We just couldn't find him that night. No wonder. The cave is a labyrinth, thousands of feet long. After an hour, they called it quits. As we was ascending, my hand touched rock, and we shined our lights up there, and it was a solid rock roof. We knew there was underwater caverns there, but we, we kind of thought we knew where they were. Somewhere, they made a wrong turn. At that point, we panicked, and we started swimming together, and of course, started breathing fast. I motioned to Scott that I was going to go find our way out, and I left Scott on the bottom looking at his compass. I looked up on top. I came back down to him, and he was gone. There I was suddenly by myself. Didn't have any idea which direction to go. Just breathing uncontrollably fast, scared to death. David is now hopelessly lost. He's deep inside the cave and running low on hair. I was thinking to myself, what was it gonna be like to take that last breath of air and pull in that first mouthful of water? What was it gonna be like to drown? Scott finds the entrance just as he runs out of air. When he gets to dry land, he calls 911. David is still lost. After 20 minutes, he emerges in a small cavern. I was just very, very uh, happy that I found an air pocket. I mean, that, I was really happy I found an air pocket. It's now midnight. David has no way of knowing whether Scott has managed to raise the alarm. He can't rely on a rescue. I tried to, to leave that air pocket and make some short circles, you know, hoping that I could find my way back, but it was all in vain. At four in the morning, a police dive team enters the cave. They believe David's air must be exhausted. They're looking for a corpse. I knew that somebody was in there looking for me, and that gave me great hope. I remember pulling out my dive knife and pulling my hand behind my back and tapping my tank because you can hear a lot further underwater. So I started tapping on my tank, you know, real hard. It's a wonder I didn't bust a hole in my tank. I tapped on it so much that night. But uh, uh, I, I never, they never did get close enough to me I could see their lights or that I could really tell that they was getting close. It was all in the distance. The divers dare go no further. For a systematic search, they need a map. They contact veteran cavers Dennis Curry and Buddy Lane. The map shows air pockets in the cave. It still gave us hope immediately that, that you know, David could be found alive in there. My philosophy is until someone or that we're looking for is cold, dead, and stiff in front of me, they're still potentially alive, and we're going to do what we can to recover those people. 